It's been quite an eventful day, everyone. SpaceX has officially rolled out B-15 to the launch pad, marking one more step forward toward the highly anticipated Flight 11. So what remains to be done before liftoff? Meanwhile, over in Florida, Blue Origin has also made progress by moving its new Glenn booster out for testing. However, the excitement surrounding that event quickly faded as the planned launch day turned out to be a disappointment. In contrast, the company has been far more active in the suborbital launch market, successfully carrying out the latest New Shepard mission. Let's explore all of these developments in detail on today's episode of Great SpaceX. We now have less than a week to go until the highly anticipated Flight 11, and it's officially time for the final moves to be made. The countdown has begun, and every action from this point forward brings SpaceX closer to the next big step in Starship's development. As always, the first part to be moved is the booster. Booster 15, or B-15, was seen departing from the Mega Bay early in the morning on the 26th of September, heading toward the Rocket Garden. This move marks the beginning of the final stage of preparations leading up to the flight. The transfer was necessary to allow modifications and refurbishments to be made at the launch pad following the return of Ship 38 to the production site during the evening of the 23rd of September and the early hours of the 24th. Over the past two weeks, engineers have been working around the clock to get everything ready. They removed ship testing systems, installed new cladding, and ensured that all connections and fittings were properly aligned. Now with all of that groundwork complete, the time has come for B-15 to take its place at the pad. The road closure for the move was announced from 10 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon on the 8th, setting the stage for one of the final major transport operations before launch day. When the moment arrived, B-15 was rolled out from the rocket garden to the launch pad, escorted by a fleet of Cybertrucks, which have now become a familiar sight during Starbase operations. Upon arrival, the iconic chopsticks on the launch tower opened wide to receive the booster. Before the booster reached the pad, engineers also performed a series of tests on the booster QD system, including several open and close cycles of the QD lid. This was most likely done to verify that the system was functioning correctly after SpaceX had previously installed a ship test system above it. By the afternoon of October 8th, just a few hours after arriving at the pad, B-15 was lifted onto the OLM. With this, the physical setup for Flight 11 was halfway complete. On X, SpaceX posted an update that read, Flight Proven Super Heavy Booster moved to the pad at Starbase ahead of launch. The post also featured a series of stunning images that captured the booster's roll and lift process. Among the photos were close-up shots of the powerful Raptor engine array, which looked immaculately organized and refined. According to SpaceX, 24 of the 33 engines on B-15 are reused from Flight 8. This milestone represents a major step forward in SpaceX's long-term goal of achieving reliable engine use. However, it also presents new challenges. The company must address the issue that caused the complete engine failure of a middle ring engine on the previous flight. In addition, this flight will introduce a new landing burn sequence designed to simulate version through operations along with a more controlled high angle of attack descent. These changes will help SpaceX test the performance and reliability of its reusability systems under more demanding conditions. Another point of interest is whether B-15 has been fitted with its FTS or flight termination system. Since the booster left the Mega Bay, there have been no clear signs of this installation taking place. There are two possible explanations. The FTS may have already been installed within the Mega Bay alongside the hot staging ring, or it could have been added later once the booster is secured at the pad before S-38 arrives. Based on the timing and preparations, the first scenario seems more likely. With B-15 now at the pad, the focus shifts to the next critical step in the timeline, getting S-38 ready for flight. It's been more than two weeks since the ship returned to Mega Bay 2 after completing its test campaign. The vehicle is currently undergoing a thorough post-test inspection, with engineers paying close attention to its engines and heat shield. The engines have endured rigorous testing and now require detailed checks to confirm their readiness for flight. 
Their performance will be crucial as they will power the ship to orbit, reignite in space, and execute complex re-entry and landing maneuvers designed to simulate future Starship return profiles from deep space. SpaceX wants to ensure that this vehicle matches or surpasses the reliability demonstrated on Flight 10 while avoiding the issues experienced on the previous three missions. SpaceX continues to push Starship's heat shields to its limits. This time, metallic tiles have been removed and a new crunch wrap layer has been added to fill the gaps and improve structural integrity under extreme heat, as well as vibration and cryogenic stress. These refinements aim to perfect the system that protects Starship during atmospheric re-entry. After inspections, SpaceX will enter final installation, fitting the flight termination system, payload dispenser, and simulated Starlink satellites as test payloads. Work is moving fast under a tight timeline, with Cameron County's road closures hitting at a October 13th launch window. S-38 must roll to the pad by October 11th or the 12th for final integration. Ground systems are also being readied. The orbital launch mount, QD systems, shops deluge setup, and tank farm are all undergoing maintenance. Full propellant and water conditioning must be complete before wet dress rehearsal or liftoff. Every detail now marks the final countdown. Excitement is building as SpaceX approaches one of Starship's most pivotal tests, Flight 11, a mission set to prove stronger heat shields, reusable engines, and next-gen flight control. History is unfolding at Starbase. Comment ready down below if you're as eager as we are for liftoff, and stay tuned for SpaceX's next leap toward a multi-planetary future. Now that we've covered SpaceX's latest moves, let us turn our attention to Blue Origin and its long-awaited progress with the new Glenn rocket. In the company's previous update, Blue Origin revealed that it planned to conduct testing of the new Glenn booster around mid-October. That same update mentioned that the booster rollout would also take place around the middle of the month, setting expectations for an important milestone in the vehicle's development. And right on schedule, October 19th, to be specific, the new Glenn booster was officially rolled out from Blue Origin's factory to LC-36 at Cape Canaveral. This move marks one of the most significant visible steps forward in the company's orbital rocket program. The booster was transported horizontally atop a specialized trailer fitted with what appears to be a rail-like track system, ensuring stability during the slow, careful journey to the pad. So far, only limited images of the rollouts have been released, and no close-up shots have surfaced to reveal the finer details. However, based on Blue Origin's typical procedure, it's reasonable to assume that once the booster arrived at LC-36, preparations immediately began for vertical stacking on the launch mount in advance of the upcoming static fire test. One of the most notable aspects of this rollout is the new Glenn booster now appears to be fully equipped with all seven of its BE-4 engines. This is a major development as previous images taken just a couple of weeks ago showed the booster without its engine section installed. The fact that Blue Origin managed to install all seven engines in less than two weeks suggests that the company has a sufficient supply of BE-4 engines on hand, just as its executives have often stated publicly. Of course, while this does seem encouraging, it remains unconfirmed until we see visual evidence or an official acknowledgement, something Blue Origin has historically been very cautious about revealing. Even if they do have an adequate number of engines ready, the real test will be whether they can maintain a consistent production rate to support high-frequency launches in the future. And that is a discussion for another time. For now, all eyes are on the upcoming NG2 mission, which represents the next major step for New Glenn. Based on the current pace of operations, a mid-October static fire test still appears achievable. Once ignited, the seven BE-4 engines will together produce approximately 1,750 tons of thrust, equivalent to more than 3.8 million pounds of force. While this is less than the sheer power of SpaceX's Starship booster, it remains an impressive figure by industry standards and will rank New Glenn among the most capable heavy lift rockets in existence. However, the real focus for Blue Origin will not just be power, it'll be reliability. The static fire test will determine whether the engines can perform consistently under full thrust and whether all of the systems integrated into the booster are functioning as intended. The outcome will influence two critical factors, the official launch schedule and the success criteria for the upcoming flight. Initially, Blue Origin stated that the launch would occur soon after the static fire test, leading many to believe that the debut flight might happen before the end 
of October. Unfortunately, that now appears unlikely. According to respected journalist Eric Berger, if all goes well with testing, Blue Origin is currently targeting a launch window between the 9th and the 11th of November. Berger has a strong track record of accurate reporting on spaceflight schedules, which makes this timeline a reliable indicator. While that news is slightly disappointing for fans eagerly awaiting a side-by-side -side comparison with SpaceX's Starship, it also highlights Blue Origin's cautious approach to ensuring success. The delay means that Flight 11 of Starship will almost certainly launch first, putting SpaceX ahead once again in this ongoing race. Now, the big question becomes whether we will see Starship's Flight 11 or New Glenn's static fire test occur first. Feel free to make your predictions in the comments below. New Glenn's upcoming mission marks a major milestone for Blue Origin. Partnering with NASA, the rocket will launch a Mars spacecraft, its first government-backed mission and a crucial step toward national security launch certification. Success here could open the door to competing directly with SpaceX for U.S. defense contracts, but it all hinges on the upper stage's precision and reliability. Equally critical is booster recovery. Blue Origin will attempt its first drone ship landing after a previous failure caused by igniter, propellant, and engine control issues. Correcting those flaws and achieving a controlled reusable landing would place Blue Origin firmly in the reusability race, a challenge that even SpaceX took years to master. Each test, rollout, and ignition now carries enormous weight. If this mission succeeds, it'll mark the true beginning of New Glenn's operational era and solidify Blue Origin's place as a serious contender in both commercial and government spaceflight. The stage is set, the countdown has begun. And while continuing preparations for its highly anticipated new Glenn rocket, Blue Origin remains very active in the suborbital spaceflight market. At 9.40 a.m. Eastern, Blue Origin launched its latest New Shepard mission, NS-36 from West Texas, carrying six paying passengers on a 10-minute journey to the edge of space. The rocket soared to 107 kilometers, just above the Kármán line, giving the crew a brief taste of weightlessness before the capsule parachuted safely back to the desert. The booster executed a flawless vertical landing eight minutes after liftoff, marking New Shepard's 15th crewed and 36th overall flight. This success reaffirms Blue Origin's reliability and dominance in suborbital tourism, a market it has steadily regained after the 2022 in-flight anomaly. Yet even with New Shepard's consistency, Blue Origin's true test lies ahead. The company's future now hinges on New Glenn, its heavy-lift orbital rocket designed to compete directly with SpaceX. Translating New Shepard's precision and reusability to orbital scale will determine whether Blue Origin can expand beyond tourism into full-fledged space operations. For now, NS-36 stands as another milestone, proof that Blue Origin continues to deliver safe, repeatable access to space while inching closer to its ultimate goal, reaching orbit. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.